Hello and welcome back. My name is Colton from Ankeny Van Builds and as you can see behind me, we have a finished Ford Transit high roof, 148 inch wheelbase van build that I just completed. This van is so cool. Can't wait to show you guys the inside of it. This van is meant for all four seasons and designed specifically for outdoor extreme type of people, skiing, snowboarding, surfing, all that sort of stuff. So let's not waste any more of your time. Let's start this van tour and let me show off all the awesome amenities of this van. Starting with the exterior mods on this van, first thing you'll notice is it has bigger tires on the bottom. It also has a lift kit on it. On the roof, you'll see the Aluminesque roof rack. And what you can't see on top of that, it has 400 watts of solar from Renogy and a freeze air air conditioning unit attached to the roof. Also on both sides, you'll see that he has some windows on the slider door and on the driver's side both have this window that you can open and slide. You can slide open and close. It also has a screen for ventilation. Coming further back, you'll see he has the flare space allowing him to sleep side to side. Both flare spaces also have the windows on it. Tons of exterior stuff on this fan, which should allow him to go off-roading on some places to get into more difficult to reach, maybe trailheads or something, but this fan is ready for all seasons. But that's the exterior. Now let's go ahead and check out the inside. Starting up at the front, you'll notice that both of these seats swivel around, opening up the space just a little bit more and providing extra seating. I think it's a must in any van build. I haven't built a single van that did not have both swivel seats. Underneath the seat, you'll notice this little guy right here. That is the Wabasto heater. It's located underneath the passenger seat, pointing right up towards the living area so it can heat up the sitting area and the bed area for when they're sleeping. And right behind the swivel seat, you'll notice we have our kitchen galley area. We have a 15 inch sink. Right next to that is a true induction single burner cooktop. This faucet is run off of a 12 volt pump. It has the normal mode and then it also has the shower head mode plenty of water pressure and underneath the sink we have these push to open drawer slides they're held shut with these magnets right here and underneath you'll see we have seven gallons of fresh water and a seven gallon of gray water tank and then there is the 12 volt pump all of these are on shark bike connectors so you just push on it releases it allowing you to take it out fill it up when you're ready to go back in it just clips right into place no worry, not having to worry about leaks or anything like that. And next to the sink, we have this mini fridge. It is a 12 volt Dometic fridge, super energy efficient. Um, any of these racks can be taken out for more storage if you have bigger items, but extremely quiet, extremely energy efficient, keeps all your stuff cold and a highly recommended product uh, for any van build. And right below this Dometic fridge, we have another push to open drawer slide. There's just some extra stuff for the water port and uh, extra pumps for the freeze air unit. But these push to open drawer slides are awesome, so you don't need any hardware. It locks into place and cannot come open unless you push it open first. So it's great, it won't come flying open while you drive. And right behind me, you see we have our couch and lounge area. It's got two cushions in the back and then one cushion right here for kind of like a chase lounge section. This one right here is actually removable in case he didn't want it taking up the floor space or if he was taking more uh, items, whatever it may be. On top of that, we have our Lagoon table mount. These things are freaking awesome. It swivels around easy enough so you can be sitting on this looking at the nice view. It spins around on the top as well. So whichever way is the most comfortable and it can tuck out of the way. Just like that, if you wanted to sit on this ottoman, 
and using these handles on all the sections here, it can easily be removed if you didn't want it in here at all. Super clutch feature, so you can be sitting here, so you can be sitting on this chase lounge, your feet kicked forward, enjoying the view, and you could be working on a laptop or whatever it may be right here on this table. Underneath the chase, you'll notice that it goes all the way back to the van. He wanted this in case he was bringing longboards or surfboards. He can have enough room to slide it underneath and have no issues with that. And then over here, he has a standing closet. He wanted a spot to hang all of his snowboard jackets. So this also has a push to open cabinet door. Simple as that. Magnets keep it held shut. And he has a curtain rod up there. And then all this for storage. Now I don't want to hear any comments about the bed. I just unrolled the thing. It's still inflating. Uh, it's a six inch mattress. It just hasn't fully inflated yet. But you can see with these flare spaces, you have plenty of room left to right. And above his bed, we have two reading lamps. They're dimmable, just like that. And on the bottom of each of them is a USB plug-in for a phone charger. And located right next to the bed is the control head for the Wobasto heater. And above the bed on both sides, they have these CR Lawrence windows attached to the flare space. These also open up and vent and gives you a chance to look at the awesome views. And then on this side of the van, we have our switch for our LED puck lights on the roof. Also a dimmer control switch here and a 110 outlet with some USB plugins for laptops and phones. And one unique thing about this section is that these pillows can be removed and then these back panels are actually removable in case he needs to access anything in the garage area or his battery setup. And these are also just held in by Velcro. One of the biggest advantages of these four transits is the height of these. I am six foot two, I'm standing straight up and down, and in here I have tons of headroom. I don't feel like I'm hunched over or I have to tilt my neck just to stand comfortably. There's tons of room inside of these things. And one last thing I wanna show you on the inside here before we go to the garage area is this air conditioning unit. It's made by a company called Freeze Air, and what it does is it takes water from a water pump, which I'll show you when we go check out the garage. It pumps water up through the pine filter that is inside of this. It evaporates water and cools down and blows that air onto you. And I don't know if I'll be able to demonstrate it properly, but this thing really pumps out some air. It's controlled by this little remote. It has an adhesive on the back so you can stick it anywhere you want. But with it going, you can turn it all the way up. And I don't know, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it through the microphone, but. But I mean, full blast, this thing really pumps out some air. Uh, I could imagine being somewhere really hot and this thing completely cooling down the inside of this van. He has a dog that he travels with, has a dog that he travels with, and that's the main reason why he wanted this air conditioning unit. Um, this is my first time installing one of these freeze air units, but I think that they are amazing. I would totally recommend it if you're gonna be somewhere where it's gonna be hot. There's nothing worse than sleeping in a van when it's super hot and all you have is a max air fan to try to cool it down. I've been in that situation one or two times and it was uh, pretty miserable. So if I had one of these, it would have been no issue whatsoever. So if you're considering uh, whether or not to get an air conditioning unit, they are a little pricey, uh, but I think it would be a total game changer as far as comfort level inside of your van. All of the wall panels and ceilings are quarter inch plywood wrapped in quarter inch plywood with some foam and upholstered with auto carpet, uh, two different colors. He's got gray on the walls and part of the ceiling and khaki on the rest of the ceiling. This really, really helps with sound deadening and a little bit of insulation as well when you drive this van around. It is dead quiet, super smooth. Um, first time using this stuff and I'm 
pleasantly surprised with it. Now moving on to the garage area of this van, we have his bed supported by the Scorva bed frames. I'll have the links to all this stuff in the description below, but on top I have the Scorva bed frames. They're adjustable in size, which is super crucial because none of the vans are consistent on how wide they are. And then we have the bed sitting on these bed slats. The bed's about 35 inches off the ground, so he has enough room for his bikes to fit underneath. And coming down into the garage area, like I was talking about before with that freeze air unit, this is where the water is held. There's a little pump right here. It, You can actually hear it still working from when I had it on earlier. But what it does is it pumps water up into that uh, air conditioning unit, evaporates, cools down, shoots down that cold water. And to refill it, you just get a hose right here. You just unscrew that and fill it up with water easy enough. Now for the electrical system, we have the Goal Zero 3000X powered by 400 watts of solar uh, from Renogy. I love these systems, they're just plug and play, super simple. I have it wired into a fuse block up there and all of my 12 volt appliances plug into that. And for that induction cooktop and the outlet, it's just plugged in to the inverter right there. Down here in the corner, we have a light switch and dimmer similar to the one you saw inside, but there's two uh, 12 volt puck lights underneath here so at night if there's stuff stored under here flip it on and you'll have some lighting down here and you may recognize this if you've seen any of my other videos but this is a water port portable outdoor shower I've done a full review on this if you want to go check that video out but essentially it is a portable water tank that is pressurized either through filling it up with a garden hose this little hand pump right here which is the slowest method or a bike pump right here. But all you do is you turn this little valve, that pressurizes the hose, come here, and you got tons of water pressure. Water pressure if you want to uh, shower or rinse your bikes off. It is also portable, it's just held by gravity on that little mount right there. So you could easily just pull it out, take it wherever you wanna go. It has a black plastic coating on the outside, so you can leave it out in the sun, it'll heat up, you'll have a nice warm shower to rinse off when you get back from whatever it is you were doing. Now on this side of the van, I mentioned before that this, this guy who's buying this van is a big skier, a uh, big outdoor adventure kind of guy. So on this side, you can see this sled right here. Uh, it is actually painted with Flex Seal waterproof paint. And in this back corner here, you can see there's a little bit of a drain it'll focus there's a little drain in the back corner there so it is actually slanted to the right and up obviously it's going to depend on what type of terrain you're on but theoretically you should be able to put your wet boots your wet skis and it'll drip onto this waterproof sled and drain out there's a pipe that goes from that drain out the bottom of the van so I think this was a great design he came up with this um, it is long enough to where his skis will fit uh, if you couldn't tell, this is the underneath section of the closet. And then underneath, there's even more storage for something if you wanted to put it down there. This right here is a Max Track. Uh, he was going to order an exterior mount for it, but again, things are taking a long time to get places, so right now it's just in the sled. Uh, but this is for if you get stuck in the snow, you shove it under your tires and it gives you enough traction to get out of there. And this floor right here is a half inch subfloor with a RV diamond pattern uh, plastic flooring. This stuff is super durable, super waterproof. So this is where I'm gonna conclude this van build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment down in the comment section below. I know I've been a little MIA from YouTube for a little bit. Um, I could give a laundry list of excuses. Um, Life's been pretty chaotic, so I went ahead and just built this without filming any of it. Um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have on this fan build. So on that, like this video, share it with your friends so it gets out to more people, helps my channel grow. Um, up next, I have a Mercedes Sprinter van build coming. It's gonna be a very similar layout to this one. So that should be super exciting. Um, I hope you guys are excited for that too. Uh, but on that, Appreciate all the love and support that you guys have given me. I'm almost at 8,000 subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you guys very much for following along. Uh, I love each and every one of you, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace. Yeah.